White. Black. White. The big advantage is that Rex should be able to reproduce exactly what I'm sending. Even if I hold my flag up at slightly the wrong moment, Rex is unlikely to fill in completely the wrong square. It's this precision that makes it possible to send digital faxes much faster without losing any quality in the reproduction. A mathematician called Huffman worked out all the possible codes for the different run lengths of black squares and white squares. And he gave the shortest codes to the most common run lengths on an ordinary typewritten letter. If I uh, put a mask over a, a line of the type, hold a magnifying glass over it, you can see that there are a lot of thin black lines. These are actually each two squares wide. And if you look on the Huffman code, you can see, because this is very common, it has a very short code. If you look at the white spaces between the lines, you can see they're all much more variable in width. So all the white spacing have longer codes. This is the same idea as Morse code where the vowels have shorter codes than the less common consonants. And this explains why fax machines slow down when they're scanning a complicated image like a photograph and speed up when they get to a bit of text. The familiar thermal fax paper simply works by going, turning black when it gets hot. Which we should do in front of this fire. A small heating element can blacken a very precise area of the paper. This is basically what's inside the thermal printer of a fax machine. It's a row of 1,728 tiny heating elements, one for each digital square of a line. The only moving part is this roller that feeds the paper through the printer. This simplicity not only makes the machine very cheap, it also makes it extremely reliable. The electronics in a fax machine are complicated not only because of all the digital coding, but also because the machines have to talk to each other to start the message going. This handshake procedure is pretty complicated. Telecom research have lent us a fax analyzer to show what's going on. But uh, the process is actually quite closely analogous to starting a telephone conversation. So, um, if I ring Rex now, what's this on? 525. All right. You're engaged. It's <laughs> fine, so I'll switch that off. Yeah, it switches off, yes. All right, then. St stop, oh, stop. Well, you stop. That's it. That's okay, it. I'll try you again. Hello, Rex here. You'll have to speak up. Hello, Tim here. Can you understand me if I speak this fast? Waffle, 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 Although the handshake is complicated, it happens completely automatically, so the machines remain extremely simple to use. I'm sure this is why they've become so popular in the office. Mr Jones, what are you playing at? This is an office, not a fast food emporium. Ooh. Knitting pattern? Joan, is this for you? Oh, I've told you a hundred times, don't use the facts for your hobbies. Oh, sorry. Oh, really? Polly? I'm expecting a very important fax for work. I do not want the machine abused for private use. And that goes for everybody. Oh. This is the last straw. Oh, here you are, love. Nice cup of tea. Oh. And we've got you a private fax of your very own. Happy now? <coughs> here he is. Oh. 
I hope I've managed to demystify these inscrutable machines a bit in this programme. I have to admit, though, I don't find the modern machines quite so appealing as the early ones. I came back from Paris so enthused by the Pantelegraph that I couldn't resist having a go at trying to make one. It might not be completely practical in an office, but there is something rather hypnotic about it. Thank you.